Time for another Mark's Comic Haul. Y'all. Hey everybody, I am so late. I am so sorry. Uh, Sean Hogan actually posted a comment on one of my other videos. He's like, hey, where's your new this week video? And yeah, I'm just running behind. Um, I've got a convention coming up at the end of June and I'm prepping for that and just a lot of stuff going on. So I'm just, I'm just running behind. That's all it is. So to make up for that, uh, I'm going to show you guys new this week books. Uh, and then I'm also going to show you some stuff that I picked up, uh, some back issues and stuff that I picked up. Uh, man, I've got bunches of stuff here. I've got, uh, eBay pickups. I've got, um, a couple of, well, a brand new store that I went to where I picked up some stuff that I felt like it was kind of untouched. And, uh, and then I've got from Boomerang Comics, which I've talked about before on the show. I had gone through, they had $2 boxes, but this time I went through their dollar boxes. And I've got a big stack of books that I'm going to show you. Uh, here, I'll give you a, a teaser. This... <laughs> This was all a dollar a book. And so I'm going to go through that at the end of this video. So we'll start with new this week and then we'll get into other things. I hope everybody's doing okay. If you guys are new to this channel and you like this content, my name is Mark Walters. I do this thing. It's called Mark's Comic Haul, y'all, where I show off different comic books that I've picked up. And mostly newer stuff, but sometimes I get into some old stuff. You'll see some old stuff today, actually, uh, that I was really happy to pick up. So... Without further ado, let's get into the new This Week haul. Uh, I also run the Dallas Comic Show. If you guys are in the DFW area, or if you can get here by the end of June, Dallas Comic Show is coming back June 26th. We're doing a special one-day event. We've got some really cool people coming. Go to DallasComicShow.com for more information about that. All right, let's get into the new This Week stuff. We'll start with DC, and then we'll go to Marvel, and then Independent. So, DC... Batman, number 109. Uh, this is... Uh, what did I read about this? Is there a first appearance in here? I think there is a first appearance in here, but I can't remember what the character is. Um, you know, it's getting to the point where, like, all these James Tinian written Batmans, there's, like, a first appearance in, like, every issue. Anyway, this is cover A. And this book seemed like it was kind of hot this week. Like, it, it seemed like it was selling out in most places I went to. This is cover B by Joshua Middleton. I thought this was a gorgeous cover B. Really, really happy with that. I actually picked up a few extras just because I thought it was such a nice cover B. And I know at least one shop I went to did sell out of this cover. So, um, yeah. So, yeah, I got a couple of those. I got four of those because I thought it was such a nice cover. You never know. Sometimes cover buys can pay off. Uh, this is the DC Pride Month cover for Batman 109, and you've got, uh, God, you got everybody on here. You got Batwoman, let's see if I can get this on the screen, hang on a second. Anyway, yeah, it's a beautiful cover, really happy with that. So, DC's doing Pride covers all month, and, uh, and then I didn't know this had actually, okay, so... They came out with Batman The Adventures Continue Season 2, Number 1. I did not know that they were doing a chase variant. This might possibly be a team variant. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry. I hate to cough when I'm recording a video. I hope that wasn't too loud. <laughs> sorry. Anyway, this uh, I hadn't seen this, but this is an Amanda Connor. I think it's Amanda Connor. Yeah. Yeah, it's Amanda Connor. Is it? Anyway, uh, Batman The Adventures Continue, number one, season two, uh, and yeah, you got all sorts of stuff going on here. I was trying to see if I could get some of the details down there at the bottom. Anyway, I thought this was a really cool cover, but I only saw this at one shop I went to. Um, yeah, it is Amanda Connor. Her signature's right there. Yeah. Doesn't quite look like her style, because she's kind of going for that Bruce Timm style, but, um... Anyway, I thought that was a really cool cover, and like I said, I only saw it in one shop, so I don't know if it's uncommon or not, but for what it's worth. This is Batman Zero Point, Batman Fortnite number four. I think this is cover A. I've stopped putting these in bags and boards because they're poly bagged, so, but you know, you do want to watch for damaged copies. Cover B, and... Cover C. 
This is what they call the premium variant. I think the artist's name is Mustard. See that? Mustard. Mustard. What about the ketchup? The Conjuring the Lover. This is a DC horror title, number one of five. I just picked this up because it's a Bill Sienkiewicz cover, and I love Bill's work, but uh, I haven't had a chance to read this yet. I've heard it's not very good. Uh, I talked to a couple people that read it and said it was not very good. But it is a five-issue miniseries, so maybe it gets better. I think they mainly just tried to get this out quickly so it would be in time with the movie getting released. Uh, the new Conjuring movie. Was it The Conjuring, The Devil Maybe Do It? That opened up over the weekend. Justice League, number 62. This book seemed like it was a little bit hot this week. Uh, I haven't read it yet, so I don't know why. But this is cover A. Um, just kind of a nice, iconic cover. Got a couple of those. And then this is cover B, which uh, I would dare say is much better. I kind of wish they'd stop doing the cover A's and cover B's. I mean, sometimes you can score a really nice, like, you know, I guess it gives you options. You can choose the cover you like the best, but I really wish they'd just do a cover A and be done with it. This is a hot book this week, The Nice House on the Lake, written by James Tinian, and this is cover A. Now, here's the funny thing about this book. I went to three different stores, four different stores, four different stores, four different stores, Two of them sold out of it. One of them, I bought their last copy of cover A. And then the other one, which was Boomerang Comics, had a giant stack on the shelf. So it's kind of hard to figure out, like, is it hot? Is it not? It, like, it sold out in a couple other places, but it, you know, the one place had, maybe the other, maybe the one place just ordered a lot of them. Uh, or maybe their audience just doesn't like horror books. I don't know. Nice House on the Lake, number one. This is the Simmons variant cover, cover B. And this seemed like it was a little bit harder to get. Like, cover A's you could find. Cover B's were not easy to find. So I managed to get a couple of those. Okay, so that's it for the DC stuff. For Marvel, uh, Alien, number two, second print. I thought this was a really nice variant. Uh, just really moody, atmospheric. Love the colors on that. Is that Salvador La Roca? I think that's who that is. Anyway, second print. Oh, wait. Yeah, second print. I, was, I thought that said third printing for a second. I was like, it just came out. All right, Amazing Spider-Man number 67. This is the Sinister Villains of Spider-Man variant cover B so I guess all this month they're doing these sinister villains variant covers and so far from what I've seen these variants are much better than the regular cover A's so I'll probably be picking up several of these anyway I thought this one was pretty nice you got everything going on there basically every spider-man character you could want is on that cover and speaking of, this is Black Cat number seven. This is the Sinister Villains of Spider-Man. Terry Dodson, cover B. Um, much nicer than the cover A that they did for this book. Um, and I managed to get, I actually went kind of nuts. I got three of those. But I, I got them from, I think, three different shops. So, but yeah, like that cover a lot. Immortal Hulk, number 47. This is cover A. I meant to pick up two of these. I only got one. I don't know why. Uh, this is the Alex Ross cover A. And then this is the cover B, the homage variant. I love what Joe Bennett is doing with these homage variant covers. They look like old Marvel covers. Pretty nice. Pretty, 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 pretty nice. Okay, so this book came out this week, and this is meant to kind of kick off a, uh, a new storyline that Marvel's doing over several books called Infinite. This is the Iron Man Annual number one, and this is the Travis Charest cover. There were several different covers for this book. From what I could tell, this was the one that was selling out. 
Um, this was the one everybody seemed to want. And uh, so you've got, if you see the background, that's Quantum in the background, this guy right here, there. And Iron Man, of course, in the foreground. So I got a couple of those, and then I was really confused because I saw this on an online order form, and it was listed for $4.99, and then when I got to the store, it was $24.99. So I think the online order form I saw, which was on Graham Crackers Comics, I think they just had it listed at the wrong price, which means somebody probably got it for $4.99. But this is a 1 in 25 uh, variant of Iron Man Annual 1 with the infinite. And the main reason I wanted to get this is because it's got all the Infinity Stones on it. And I'm a big Infinity Gauntlet nut. I love Infinity Gauntlet. So I really wanted this cover. And uh, it was a little more than I wanted to pay for it. They charged, you know, 1 in 25 pricing on it. But I had to have it. So... Star Wars War of the Bounty Hunters, uh, number one. This is cover A, I believe. Most Wanted, cover A, pretty cool. This is cover B, which is, I meant to bag this. I always forget to do this. This is a wraparound cover. I meant to bag it so I could flip it around and show you, but it's basically got all the legacy characters on it. So you've got like Luke, Leia, Han's on the back, I think Chewie's on the back, beating up some guy. I actually was thinking about going back and getting another one of those. And then this, I felt, would probably be a hot cover. And I'm glad I grabbed it because it did look like it was selling out. It's the John Tyler Christopher action figure variant featuring Boba Fett. And uh, I kind of went nuts on these. I got like three or four of them. But again, I got them from different shops. So I would go in, they'd have them on the shelf, I'd buy one. Um, but yeah, they, they didn't seem to have too terribly many of them. So I'm glad I got the ones I did. Okay, Independent. Basilisk, this is a new Cullen Bunn book. This book seemed like it was selling out from what I could see. Uh, new Boom Studios number one issue. This is cover A. Really nice artwork. Nice art on the inside, too. Uh, got a couple of those. And then this is cover B, which, from what I could tell, it seemed like it was a little harder to get. There is a chase variant on here, on this book, which I think... There's two chase variants. There's a, a version of cover A, and then I think there's a version of cover B. I didn't get either one of them. <clears throat> because the prices that the stores had on them was, it was a little bit much. And uh, I've noticed a lot of shops are really starting to upcharge on these uh, ratio variants. Like, you know, it used to be they would charge you what I thought was a pretty fair going rate, but now they're kind of like, they're kind of going nuts on them. So, okay, this is Betty Page, The Curse of the Banshee. Uh, this is the Joseph Michael Linsner cover, as Comic Crypt of Castle Hills is wont to say. Uh, to everybody take a drink when I say Joseph Michael Linsner, but he, he says it because he buys a lot of Joseph Michael Linsner covers. Anyway, I thought this one was the nicest one. So, I went ahead and grabbed that. Um, Noctera, this is the Ginny Frizen variant for number four. And I kind of went nuts on this too because I just felt like... This, I, first of all, I think it's a great Frizen cover. I think she really knocked it out of the park on this one. So I, I bought several. Um, but yeah, beautiful Jenny Frizen variant. And I kind of feel like Noctera is probably a book that's not terribly highly ordered. You know, like uh, there can't be just a ton of them out there. And then last but not least of the Independence, this is Shadecraft number two, second printing. And this was not an easy book to find. Uh, went to four different shops. One shop had it on the shelf. Another shop had it on the shelf. And I meant to pick up an extra copy. And I didn't. And I'm kind of regretting it. But I have a feeling this will be a hot one. So. It's just a cute cover. Alright. So let me get into some other stuff that I picked up. Uh, you guys saw. I think on my last video. I showed you that I had picked up. 
this uh, X-Men 92 number seven. Oh, wait a minute. This is number, yeah. Okay, this is number seven. I showed you guys number six. Um, I'll start with this. This is number seven, and the main reason I picked this up is because the Toadies uh, are right here on the cover. It even says featuring the Toadies. And they're also in the inside the book. And the main reason I picked this up is because Mark Reznicek, who is the drummer of the Toadies, is one of my guests at Dallas Comic Show. He's actually written a Dark Horse comic called Buzzkill, a character that was featured in Donny Cates' crossover book. Uh, Donny Cates co-wrote Buzzkill with him several years ago before Donny Cates was anybody. But I thought, how cool is it that the Toadies appear in a Marvel comic book, especially an X-Men comic book, so I grabbed a couple extras of these, um, but the main thing I wanted to show you was that I had showed you issue six last time. This is issue six, but this is a variant cover, and I think this is like a one in ten or one in five variant cover, uh, and it's very interesting because um, just really bizarre artwork on here. Anyway, so the reason I picked up number six is because the Toadies also appear in this book, but they're not on the cover. Um, so issue seven would be the first cover appearance. Issue six would be the first time the Toadies appear in a Marvel comic book. And they're all in there. So I'm definitely going to get Mark Reznicek to probably sign these and may even send them off to get slabbed just because I doubt anybody else has those that way. Picked this up at Titan Comics. Uh, I was surprised to see it in the back issues. This is Red Thorn number one. I don't know if you guys saw the news, but this just got picked up to be a series on BBC uh, and not a highly ordered Vertigo book. Uh, so I was very happy to see that they still had it in their back issues and they had not priced it up. So I went ahead and grabbed a copy. So yeah, happy to get that. Uh, this was a book I saw like a week or so ago at Boomerang Comics, and I couldn't remember. I knew I had seen it there, but I couldn't remember where I had seen it. And I went back, and I was tearing the store apart, and I was trying to figure out, where did I see this book? And then I finally realized it was in a box on their counter when you check out. They have a box filled with variant covers. And I think Mersnot showed this book off. And uh, this book's going for like 25 30 bucks on eBay, and it's Angela Asgard's Assassin, number three, variant cover by uh who is it la fuente i'm not sure who that is but you got angela holding the baby there and loki and um yeah it's just a fun variant cover and i remember seeing this in the box and i remember thinking i think it was cheap and so i went back and i looked and sure enough there it was five dollars i was really surprised they only had it marked five bucks and this is just a flawless copy too so i went ahead and grabbed that Anyway, this is one of those under-the-radar books you might want to look for because, like I said, they had it for 5 bucks, and it is selling right now for like 25 30 bucks on eBay. So, okay, so I'm trying to decide if I want to do this or this first. I think I'll do this. Okay, so Boomerang Comics, where I got that variant, uh, I did a haul one time before where they had $2 boxes, where everything in the box was $2.00 unless it was marked differently, and so I had gotten a lot of really cool books for $2. Well, they also have dollar boxes, which I didn't get a chance to go through the last time, so I went back, made a special trip, just so I could go through the dollar boxes, and I think I did pretty well. All right, so here we go. This is Avengers 36. I've shown this book before. This book has gone into second printing. Uh, I think the reason this book was so hot was because after Chadwick Boseman passed away and Marvel started doing the tribute little thing here on the top, this was the first book to feature Black Panther with that tribute at the top. And this book sold out like almost immediately. It also has Moon Knight in it, and Moon Knight's pretty hot right now, so that could also f feed into why, you know, it was hot. Uh, these I just grabbed because they were a buck a piece. Brian Bolin covers. I need to get bags and boards for these. This is uh, Batman Gotham Knights number 33 featuring Bane. Nice Brian Bolin cover. Batman Gotham Knights number 34 featuring Bane and Batman working together. Anyway, nice Bolin cover. 
Uh, Batman Gotham Knights number 27 featuring Batman and Superman. Batman, oh, yeah, the, okay, so that's it for Batman and Gotham Knights. Uh, this is Batman Max Arkham Dreams number four, number five. I just picked these up because they were in really nice shape, and then this was this kind of this was why I picked up four and five. Batman Arkham Dreams, the Lost Year Compendium, and this collects the first three issues into one issue so now i can read one through three and then read four and five and have the whole shebang these i was surprised they had in a dollar box this book sold out when it came out and i couldn't get it anywhere and then i find it for a dollar so werewolf by night number one the new werewolf by night cover a I think I got a cover B when it first came out, but for some reason cover A was just really hard to find. I got a couple of those. And then this is The Amazing Mary Jane, number one. I mainly picked this up because my friend Leah Williams wrote it, and I'm sure I'll probably have her back at one of my shows. <laughs> this book. This book. Uh, <laughs> okay. So this book is, this is my fourth copy of this book. Oh, actually, this was in their $2 box. I don't know how this got mixed up, but this was in their $2 box. Secret Avengers, or I'm sorry, New Avengers, Secret Invasion, New Avengers number 39, and this is the, uh, I guess, where Echo joins the team. You've seen me show this book on, like, my last four hauls. I swear to God, it's not the same book. This is literally my fourth copy that I've picked up of this book. I just keep running into it. And but I feel like it's gonna be like one of those sleeper books that people are gonna wish they had because Echo's really hot right now. So, um, this is Birds of Prey number 121. I just I had to get this because it's a Joker, it's a wonderful Joker cover, and I, I just had to have it. So, okay, that those two were out of the two dollar box. So they kind of got mixed in there somehow. These, okay, we're back to the dollar books now. Uh, Southern Bastards, number one. I have been looking for this book uh, for such a long time. I always find the later issues. I'll find like two through whatever, but I never see number one. And I was shocked that they had it in the dollar box. Uh, it's just a cool book by Jason Latour uh, and Jason Aaron. And this is the first issue, and first time I've, I think this is the first time I've ever come across this book. So I was happy to get it for a buck. Avenging Spider-Man number 10, this is the second appearance of Carol Danvers as uh, Captain Marvel. I have kind of given up on ever owning a number 9. I really would love to own a number 9, because it is the first appearance of Carol Danvers as Captain Marvel. And I love the cover, I just, I never find it anywhere i've looked everywhere for it and i don't want to pay the prices that it's going for now because it's just kind of gotten out of hand so uh this was was this out of the dollar box no i think this was the two dollar box yeah wonder woman number 172 uh adam hughes cover with superman beautiful cover this is turning into a long video. I need to hurry up. X-Men number, uh, X-Man number 17, just another part of the Onslaught uh, saga that they were doing. Okay, yeah, and this, that was out of the $2 box for sure. I know that was. Now we're back to the dollar box. Night Nurse, uh, this is a collection of, like, older Night Nurse stories and then recent Night Nurse stories, but it's a big thing thick book. I don't know if you can see, look at how thick that is. And uh, I've never seen this. I didn't know Marvel had put this out. So, and I love Night Nurse. So I uh, was happy to get this. It's a little, this one's got a little bit of wear. Like you can tell this one's been read, but for a buck, I mean, you know, this is a, an $8 book, you know? So yeah, I was happy to get that. This is an interesting book. I don't know if you guys are familiar with this. It's called Psychops. This was actually published by Comics Interview 
uh, which is actually, there's the logo right there, Comics Interview. Comics Interview was a comic zine that came out back in like the 80s and I think even part of the 90s. Anyway, this was their attempt to make their own comic books. But what's interesting about this is, if I'm not mistaken, this is the first printed comic work of Brian Stelfreeze. Um, and if you look, you can see, yeah, there's a signature there at the bottom. And it's, it's cool artwork. It's actually black and white on the inside. Uh, this is another interesting book I was happy to find in the dollar bin. And I've had this book before, but it's been a long time since I've had it. Strike Force Moraturi, number 16. Does anybody know the significance of this? If you look at the artwork long enough, you could probably figure it out. But this is Will Spertasio's first penciled work at Marvel. Um, so this is kind of, I guess you could call it a key book. But uh, yeah, not a common book to come across because Strike Force Moratori was not a highly ordered book at that time. Another beautiful book that I don't know if I've ever had it or not, but I, I, it's a book I never see in good condition, and this is a very nice copy. This is Warlord number 100, double size issue, Mike Grell cover. Uh, just a beautiful kind of classic DC book and beautiful shape. I don't know if you guys can see the spine, but this is a great, there's a little bit of a nick right up there at the top, but that's kind of common for these thick books. So I was happy to get that. <laughs> this is another interesting book that kind of harkens back to my early days of collecting comics because I started collecting comics in the 90s. Cyber Rad number one. This is from Neil Adams Continuity Comics. And I believe this was the first comic book to ever have a hologram on the cover. Let me see if I can pick it up here. I don't know if you guys can make out the character that's in the hologram. Wow, that glare is not helping. Eh, it's like a cybernetic looking robot thing. Anyway... Uh, it's kind of cool, like, uh, I had forgotten about this book, but yeah, it's a, it's a neat sort of throwback to 90s books. Uh, this book was really hot for a little bit, and then the movie came out and bombed, and then nobody cared about it anymore. The Kitchen, number one, from Vertigo. Uh, Becky Cloonan cover, I think it's Ming Doyle artwork, and yeah, Ming Doyle artwork. But uh, this is the first issue, kind of a low printed title, and they made this into a movie with Melissa McCarthy and Tiffany Haddish, and who was the third person in there? I can't remember. But it tanked, like nobody went to see it. I think it came out during COVID time or something like that, I can't remember. Teen Titans number one, I picked this up because it is, or I'm sorry, Teen Titans number 25, I'm getting a little bit fried here. Uh, this is the origin the Secret Origin of Lobo's Daughter, Crush. And I don't think I have this issue. I don't remember picking this issue up, so I was kind of happy to get that for a buck. They had a bunch of, like, recent DCs for a buck in those boxes. Uh, Hero Alliance, number one. Uh, this is kind of a classic, like, independent book. Uh, is that Bart Sears, I think? Early Bart Sears? Yeah, I think it's Bart Sears. But yeah, if you guys have never seen books from this imprint, like Adam Hughes did some of their early work. Uh, Exo Man of War number 14. I think it's just an early Turok appearance in Valiant Comics. It might be, the, was this the first appearance of Turok in Valiant? I can't remember if it was or not. I remember this book was really hot when it came out. I had I used to have like a stack of them, but I think I got rid of all of them. Hawkeye number five. Just picked it up because you know all these Hawkeye books are kind of going up in value because everybody's specking on Kate Bishop. This is kind of a cool book. This is Mac Bolin, the Executioner, number one from Innovation Comics, and it's a black cover with this like red foil X on it. So this is like a deluxe format. If you open the cover, you can see, like, the regular cover on the inside. I just thought it was cool. Dr. Afra number 25. Just a beautiful cover here by, uh... Is this Ashley Witter? I'm, I'm not sure. 
Anyway, it's a beautiful Dr. Aphra cover, and I don't think I have this issue, so I was glad to get that for a buck. Countdown presents The Search for Ray Palmer, Crime Society, number one. The main reason I picked this up, I already have this book, but Sean McKeever wrote it, and he's one of my guests at Dallas Comic Show coming up. First appearance of the Jokester. It's kind of like an alternate universe Batman Joker scenario. So, anyway. <laughs> this is a book that I picked up the cover B, but I never got the cover A, and I always meant to go back and get it. But hey, now I got it for a dollar. So this is Heavy, number one. Cover A. This book actually did go into second printing, I believe, too. So yeah, kind of happy to get that. And then last but not least, for the dollar books, this is Carnosaur Carnage from Atomica, Atomica Press. And it's a big deluxe book. And I think this has... Um, some pretty famous artists working in it. Like I think Walt Simonson and uh, yeah, I think this is, I think this is a Simonson cover actually. Yeah, I think it is. So anyway, kind of a cool book, cool indie book. Okay. So geez, I'm already at 31 minutes. I'm going to try to whip through these last ones real quick. So then I went to another new store that I think is just called coins, cards, and comics. It's in Louisville, Texas. They just opened up. Uh, very nice people. It's run, it's actually owned by a guy named William Hughes. And I knew William Hughes because he's kind of like a high end collector. He had come to my shows, bought comics and stuff before. I used to see him at Heritage when I worked at Heritage. He's opened up a really nice kind of boutique comic shop. Like you walk in, they got custom fixtures, they got really expensive old comics in there. And in the back room, they have back issues and they're actually color coded on the back so that there's like four different price points it's like a dollar three dollars five dollars and seven dollars and you can go through all the boxes and pick out the ones you want they even have boxes separated so it's like the every book in this box is a dollar every book in this box is three dollars stuff like that so i spent a couple hours in there and i found what i think was some pretty nice stuff um i'm pretty happy with what i got so i'll show you those and all of these books were 44 bucks with tax and everything, I think, all included, all in. So this is All Winners Comics number one. This is a reprint from Timely Comics Presents. Uh, I think I showed you guys a Captain America comics that was kind of similar to this. I was really happy to get this. I love these re reprints of the old, like, Golden Age Marvel comics. So, yeah, really cool to get that one was that Schomburg art that was that was three dollars I think this was a buck Captain America number 203 Jack Kirby artwork Captain America and the Falcon and this is in really nice shape now this is from when Kirby came back he had left and then he came back and uh but all these books are really nice uh from this era so yeah this was a buck i was really kind of impressed with that this one was this was three dollars i couldn't believe this was three dollars captain america number 150 um and just a really nice kind of classic captain america issue i think sal buscema did the artwork in this issue but uh yeah you got um falcon in there and uh i love this cover i love the logo treatment on this cover it's a little bit yellowed i don't know if you guys can see that it's a little yellowed but not bad i mean like you open it up it doesn't look bad for three bucks i mean can't beat that this is another one that i picked up because uh flash number 45 gorilla grod i picked this up because David Sobolov, who does the voice of Grodd on the Flash TV series, um, is going to be at my show, and I thought this would be a cool book to get him to sign. So, happy to get that. I've had that book before. This is another great Flash book from that run. This is Flash number 79. Uh, I believe at the time it was the first return of uh, Professor Zoom, um, although I can't remember if they called him that at the time. But yeah, this is just a cool issue. 
the and that was three dollars um this was five dollars which again just a beautiful copy and that's iron man annual number four from 1977 uh, just a really cool classic Iron Man book. Look at that 50 cent price tag. 1977 Iron Man annual, king size annual, number four. Really cool. <laughs> I saw that and I was like, oh, I couldn't have grabbed that fast enough. This one was also five bucks. Uh, I've had this book before, but it's been a while. Man Thing, number one. Yeah, pretty neat. Man Thing's kind of making a bit of a comeback right now. I grab these books every time I see them, especially if they're cheap. This is this was three bucks. Marvel Super Heroes Summer Special X-Men. Uh, Arthur Adams cover, big deluxe format, thick book. And these books are really hard to find in good condition. Like, like I would say near mint condition. They almost always, because they're thick books, they warp on the spine. So this is a really nice copy that is not warped. Uh, if you see any warping, it's on the bag. It's not on the spine. So I was happy to get that. This was $3. Moon Knight Annual Number 1, which is also called a one-shot. And I didn't have it. And of course, Moon Knight is super hot right now. So I figured I'd grab that. This was pretty cool to find, and this was three bucks. This was Super Crooks number one. Why am I excited about this? You guys might have heard that Mark Millar's Jupiter's Legacy just got canceled. Well, the series they're going to replace it with is Super Crooks. And this is Super Crooks number one. Not exactly an easy book to find, so very happy to get that for three bucks. Um, this was the book that I just was over the moon when I found it. I was like, I could have just got this and been happy. Wildcats number two. This is the newsstand version. For you guys that aren't familiar with the book, Wildcats number two had this like foil background all around it here. And uh, the newsstand version is much harder to find because there's no foil on the cover. It's just this white background. And because it's white and because it's a newsstand, it's very, very hard to find this in good condition. Uh, usually they're beat up pretty bad or they're yellowed because of the white cover. This copy is gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. Wow, sorry about the glare. Um, and they only go for like 10 bucks or something, but I have a feeling over time that'll be a nice book to have. I don't know why I don't have more copies of this, but this is X-Men number 11, and it's just a really cool Jim Lee cover. I think a lot of people consider this to be like a classic cover, and uh, this was three bucks, so just went ahead and grabbed it. Definitely lower print run than those early Jim Lee X-Men. And then this is X-Men number 12. This is when Art T. Bear took over. Uh, I think he did like two or three issues. And then they brought in, God, who was it, Tom Rainey or somebody else. But anyway, uh, this is another book I didn't have, and I think it's not the easiest book in the world to find, so I went ahead and grabbed it. All right, real quick, I'm almost done, guys. Sorry, I know this has been a long one. But I had to make up for the fact that I was running behind. So I went to Red Pegasus. Uh, well, I did get this at Titan Comics. This is Wonder Woman number 772, first appearance of her dark, persona or whatever i got an extra copy of that because that book seemed to sell out everywhere then i went to red pegasus and i picked up a few books from them this is the uh what is this heroes reborn the Stormbreakers peach momoko variant for ghost rider this seemed to sell out everywhere when it came out so i wanted to get an extra copy i, I did get a copy of this once before but i only got one so i was happy to get a second copy of that Got another copy of DC Festival of Heroes, number one, featuring the Art Germ Batgirl variant. Love that cover. And then this I was super happy about. Red Pegasus, I think, was the only store in Dallas that got these. But this was a team variant for uh, Wonder Girl, number one. And it's a foil variant. As you can see, foil there on the background. Uh, and yeah... They had these, they only got like 10 of them, and I had them hold me a few. 
So very happy to get those. They were not cheap, but I was more than happy to pay because I, like I said, I didn't see them anywhere else. All right, guys, that's it. That's my whole haul. I hope you enjoyed that very much. Uh, I apologize for the lateness of this video. I will try to get back on a regular schedule later this week. Uh, I've just been super, super busy. So Sean Hogan, everything's fine. Don't worry. <laughs> I appreciate you checking up on me though. Um, so for those of you that want to see more about me, you can go to bigfanboy.com. That's my website I've had for 16 years now, going on 17 uh, movie news and reviews. You can also check out DallasComicShow.com for more information about Dallas Comic Show, which is coming up June 26th. We've also got a show August 21st and 22nd, and we've got another show November 6th and 7th, and that's going to be a big one. Um, but yeah, come check us out June 26th, DallasComicShow.com. Lots of fun stuff going on there. And then also check out my movie review show, Big Film Show. It's at BigFilmShow.com. Uh, that's it for me. I hope you enjoyed Mark's Comic Hall, y'all. Everybody stay safe. Uh, my shout-outs to Spidey Fan, uh, Mr. Mortis 86 uh, Comic Crypt of Castle Hills, Fred Hall Direct Edition. I'll see you guys later.